Good morning, Facebook family and friends at Temple of Faith of God. Good morning. It's good to be amongst the living on this side of the dirt. Praise God. Man, you don't know how precious the air in your lungs is until you get into the state that I am in. Praise God with these inhalers and nebulizers and things. <clears throat> but I'm glad to be here. And uh, I've got a message from the Lord to tell God's people. To all of those that are hungry and thirst after righteousness, the God, the God of uh, our fathers will use me to speak to you what he said and that you should apply it to your life. All things according to life and godliness is in this B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Uh, basic instructions before life ends. Man, the weary will be at rest. It's a song. The weary will be at rest. Yeah. The wicked will cease and the weary will be at rest. We are living in that time, saints. I'm a watchman on the wall. I'm coming to you from the weeping prophet Jeremiah, where they throwed him in prison for speaking the truth. We got people out there being thrown into jail for speaking this what just said the Lord, speaking the truth. People were in captivity. The people going into captivity. He spoke truth to them. He spoke truth to power. The prophets prophesied lies and the priests by rule by their means. And the people love it so. You notice how the man, you don't know what, what is truth. My word is truth, Jesus told them. It's, it's in the word. Run everything across reference to the word of God. And you need a Bible-believing church and a pastor that's going to speak the undulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Line upon line, precept upon precept. We're going to need the word to withstand the wiles of the enemy like Jesus did in the wilderness. When he said, a man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Man, look around you. Listen to what's going on around you. We crying about gas prices and all of that. <laughs> Some girl put on Facebook, I remember when... I was struggling with 99 cents gas. I said, I remember when we were struggling to get that 25 cent gas. Man, what's going to happen? That's going to gonna be. But the times is winding down as we're going to go through some stuff that we have never went through before in our life. Or it's going to be so great that we don't seem like we can make it out. But we got to look to the hills which cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord, the bread of life. The man that you made your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look to him. And who is he? He's the word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. First, uh, uh, Saint John one and one and fourteen. Listen to me, saints. You gotta have a hunger, and this is that last and evil days. The, the people are gonna be dull of hearing. People ain't gonna wanna hear it. They're gonna draw to this Word. And a whole bunch is going to fall by the wayside. And a whole bunch is going to not want to hear this word. 
he that endured to the end shall be saved. Man, it's some people going through some stuff. You, you, man, I look at my life and what I'm going through, it is that nothing compared to what the Ukrainians are going through. And man, our government is just, it's uh, not to mention the conservative side. It's some wickedness in the high places. We got to fight against injustices. We got to bear the infirmities of the weak. If it's going to be gas prices going up and up and up, I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to be counted worthy of, yes, if it's going to cost me more gas, take it. Let us, let's ask that, let it be. Take care of those folks. We bear the infirmities of the weak. We got to take care of those that are being unjust. Wow. Let's go to the word and let's have a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come humbly submitting ourselves before your throne room of grace and mercy. We ask in that you use me. I've been bought with a price. Speak to your people. Hide me behind the cross at Calvary and speak through me to your people what you are saying in this hour. Father God, let the meditation of my mind and the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And Father God, when the word goes forth with power, somebody out there might ask what must they do to be saved, delivered, healed, sanctified, and set free. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And we thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. It's a long title here. The, the title of my, my message is The Day of the Lord, The Time of Jacob's Troubles, The Tribulation Hour, The Tribulation Time, Jacob's Trouble. That was Jacob. Remember when... Jacob ladder, when Jacob was from, was having an anxiety attack, he was in a depressed state. He was being fearful of his brother because Jacob, remember, he was the trickster. His name became Israel this, this night that he wrestled with the angel of God because he knew he was so wicked. He had did wicked things. He started out being wicked, trying to pull out his brother in the womb. Trickster. He was trickster. He was a con man. And it, and it came to an head. He sent all of his possessions and his servants to his brother to try to make it bends. And he sent his wife on another trip to get out of harm's way. And he was having this anxiety attack of his brother's going to kill him. His brother's going to kill him. Sometimes we go through some pain and some suffering, and it's to make us better, to, 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 to make us who God wants us to be, like being on the potter's wheel. He's shaping and molding. Why he's shaping and molding? Man, you're going through some pain and some suffering. Like I said, the wine doesn't get made without being mashed. The diamond does not be formed unless the darn cold is being up under pressure. We got to realize the things, all things work together for our good. And we got to speak those things that be not as though they are. My wife keeps telling me, baby, we ain't broke. <laughs> <laughs> my, my finances are dwindling and they're dwindling. My savings are dwindling. My my my, my stash that I had for hard times like these is going down, down, down. And, and my wife said to speak those things and be not as though they are. We're not broke. We have plenty of us. We're going to make it. 
Look to the hills which come and I will help. God got us. We are his children. He said he'll never leave us, don't forsake us. But Jacob, he was fearful. And when he did get up, after wrestling with the devil, uh, with the, the angel, God told him to change his name to Israel. God blessed him to take the uttermost to the the uh, the guttermost. He'll take the the the, the, the guttermost and put him into the uttermost, like he did your humble servant. He'll take you out of the mire and the, the murky and the mire and the mud and the, and the, the, the sins that you was in. If you come clean and ask him to help you, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God and he will elevate you in due season. Be not weary and well doing so and due season you'll reap if you faint not. Jacob was uh, was he was he was fainting. <laughs> he was fainting, and so he gets up after he wrestled with the, the, the devil all night. And he said, "Lord, you gotta bless me. You gotta bless me. You got to bless me." And so the Lord blessed him, changed his name to Israel. He went up and he met his brother. His brother, I don't want none of this. Man, the Lord done blessed me, man. I done forgot all about that. Come on, give me a hug, man, and let's have a good time and celebrate. And he's still trying to get his brother some stuff. Man, I got plenty, plenty. I don't need none of yours. And so he got all this stuff back to him, got back with his wife, and uh, he lived uh, the rest of his life. Man, we got to realize we're going to go through some stuff, but Jacob's trouble, that's what it was all about. Jeremiah 30, 1 through 9. Let's read the scripture. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Thus speaketh the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write thee all the words that I have spoken unto thee, in a book. This is the book. Jeremiah 3. For in the day, in the days come, said the Lord, what I will bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, said the Lord. And I will cause them to return in the hands, in the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. This is in their first captivity. And God is sending a message to them that he's going to, going to bless them. They're going to be blessed. It's coming out of the mouth of Jeremiah. After Jeremiah told them they were going into captivity, and he got locked up for telling them the truth. They locked him up. They didn't want to hear that. Five, four. And these are the words that the Lord spake concerning Israel and concerning Judah. For thus said the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. This is what, it's a fear coming in. Don't know what you're going to do. Don't know when you're going to be able to handle the bills that are coming in and feed yourself as well and buy gas to get to and fro. I show, well, I the bless, I don't have to commute. The commuter's going to have to pull up their bus strap. You know about the beans and the cornbread? Got to get back there. We know how to live that pole life, right? We, we've been there, done that. So I hope you know how to do that. We know how to pile everybody, three or four families in one house. Been there, done that. We know how to do that too. Let's say that's where the Mexicans, they never got away from it. Well, we start living the high life and maybe we have to come on downsides or come all together as one. Six, ask ye now, 
and see whether a man has does travail with child. Therefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. That fear, man, that worry, that not knowing what tomorrow's going to bring. And, and the, the Baker Matthews just said, there, take no thought for tomorrow, for God has <laughs> will take care of you on the, the tomorrow. And seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. God got you covered. In the book, he said he would. You might have to taste a little bit of it, but you're going to come out as pure gold. We got to fight this good fight of faith. We got to lay hold on eternal life. If you just believe whatever you pray to your humble servant, to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as you humble, he's making you more humble. He's making you be able to realize the plight of those that are less fortunate than you and for you to be able to take care of them because there's going to be a wealth transference coming in this hour. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. It's in this hour. So if you stay the course, if you endure to the end, if you continue to lift up your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, regardless of what you go through, you will come out as pure gold. There's a payday after a while. We got to stay the course. We got to stay in the word. We got to feast off the word. We got to have a hunger and a thirst after the word. Seven. Alas, for that day is great, so that some, the none, is like, none is like it. It is even the times of Jacob's troubles, but he shall be saved out of it. Like Jacob was saved out of it, and he was a, a, wrestling with the devil. With the, with, I keep saying devil. When he was wrestling, felt like the devil when he was wrestling with him. But he was wrestling with the angel. And he, man, he, he got, he wanted that blessing. Keep pushing. Keep praying. Keep believing that your prayers will be answered. You've got to believe. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10. 5 and 17 or 10 17? Romans 10 17. But for, for it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord of hosts, right, that I will break the yoke from off thy neck. He's going to take the yoke. And he said his yoke is easy and his burden is not light. But the, the, the world's yoke on your neck is not a good thing. And I will burst thy hands, I will burst thy bounds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Man, all them that's coming at you, the bill collectors, all them people that you owe, all them. All the people that's, that's trying to get a uh, steal and take and con you out of your stuff. And God's going to be right there protecting his children. But you got to believe. You got to have faith. You have to make him your Lord and Savior. You got to get in this word. And you got to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You got to put on the whole armor. Man, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this world. They up there. They're trying to take you back to a place that you don't never want to be. 
and you got to be able to withstand in the last and evil days. Nine, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. Jesus Christ and them crucified. He came to die on the cross. He's talking to the children of Israel, but it's applicable. Remember, the Old Testament conceals what is going to be revealed in the New Testament. It's all about Jesus Christ. Jesus told the disciples, you, you think you have eternal life. But search the scriptures, they speak of me. It's talking about Jesus Christ. All of these scriptures that we're reading in the Old Testament are pointing towards this Savior, that is Christ the Lord. When he talk about his patriots in the old time that come to deliver and to set free and all of that, it's Jesus Christ's spirit. It's Jesus Christ that has come to set the captives free. He anointed us to be able to do that. Remember, we were talking about uh, John the Baptist. He had the same spirit. He come to set the captives, set the captives free. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. God come to redeem His people. Those that in Jeremiah he said, "I knew you before you were formed in your belly." That's what told Jeremiah. He knew who is his. God knows. He said, <laughs> the day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Many are called, but few are chosen. You got to have God in your life. You have to repent. You have to come clean. You have to want to make him your Lord and Savior to be able to reap these benefits of him taking care of you. You might not live a lavish life. Some, some do, some don't. It depends on whatever God put in your heart. You got some people that you need to bring on. Once he gets you to the state that he can use you to be able to go forth in the vineyard, reaping the harvest. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are fruit. God said, pray that he send forth labors in the vineyard to reap the harvest. It's a new kingdom. We're not talking religion here. We're talking spirituality. It's a relationship. And the DNA, you can be revealed through the scriptures about what your father is all about and how he operates and what he likes and what he dislikes. And at the end, he, he said, I'm going to rise up for people. He kept telling the people in, in, in the Old Testament, I'm going to rise up for people that I'll put my laws in their heart and write them in their mind. This is what he's going to do for us. He did that with the Holy Ghost. And the boy said, why you always say Holy Ghost? I said, yeah, the devil don't like to hear that. It's the Holy Spirit, same thing. The Holy Ghost has power in my, in my relationship with God. It has power. It scares the devil. He trembles. But you, he, you got his spirit within you. He said, I'm going back. I send you a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. So whatever you go through, you I'm going through with you. And I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Praise God. Let's get to the scripture. Jeremiah 29, 30, and 31. Let's see what this said. Read that for me, brother. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 30 through 31. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, verse 31, Send to all them of the captivity, saying, Thus saith the Lord concerning 
Shemaiah the uh, the Nehalite might, because that Shemai hath prophesied unto you, and I sent him not, and he caused you to trust in a lie. Nelamite, 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 he just no, uh, uh, only one lie. I'm a, uh, uh, this lie. My lie is the one that's gonna be. I mean, these people have been. It's Antichrist. You think you have that much power over that many people? Good God! And they do. Principalities and powers, rulers of darkness in high places, to, to the enemy. Come to kill, steal, and to destroy. That's his job. He does it well. We got it. The kingdom of God suffered violent. The violent have to take it back by force. We are the, the, the one that's supposed to take it back by force. We are more powerful than they are. We're more, we're more powerful than the world against us. We got the most power. God is still on the throne, and he still is the ruler of everything. And do you think he's going to let the devil win? Yes, if we all fall by the wayside, stand up. Send labors in the vineyard. Pray that he send labors in the vineyard. Will you be one of those laborers? Will you, did, he, did he count you worthy? Did you say yes? When he, you heard his voice, did you say, Lord, yes, send me? Yes, he's waiting on you and the masses for us. Have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. The only way you're going to be able to do that is study to show yourself approved, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing this word of truth. You've got to have this word in you so you can retrieve this word. Whenever the enemy come into you like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him by this word that is in you. It's more powerful than anything. It's the sword, the word. It cuts like a two-edged sword. It cuts moral to the bone. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It'll read you and your motives, and it'll read them all around you. Discernment between good and evil. You'll be able to discern them. You know who they are. Let's get the second scripture. Uh, Send to uh, Joel 2, 25 and 26. Joel 2, 25 and 26. Joel chapter 2, verses 25 through 26. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Verse 26. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that hath dwelt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Whatever... You lost, or whatever you trust, struggling, trying to get back. God is going to give it back to you. He did that to the children of Israel. He told them, I said, don't, don't be dismayed. I'm going to come and sin. I'm going to send you back to the land that your fathers were promised. And you're going to remember, he told the Israelites in one passage that. You're going to have houses that you did not build. And grapes that are big and all of that, man, flourishing. He will do that. He'll open the doors and windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing if you're going about the scriptures. 
line upon line, precept upon precept. If you're doing the word like he told you to do, you got to do it. He said tithes and offering. He told you how to do it. He line upon line. You have no excuse. Your teacher, your preachers, and all of that supposed to tell you. They were building, not the wall, they were building the temple in the Sunday school lesson. They were building the, all the stuff that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had stole and took the Babylon out of the temple before he burned it down. Man, they got it all back. All that. All that stuff was laid up, sitting up waiting for that day when God said, but children, you need your stuff back. He's going to give you your stuff back. And he's again open doors that no man can shut, and he can shut doors that no man can open. He got your back. He will take care of you in the hard times and in the good times. He's always there for you. Matthew. Now, what we at, Joe? Did you wrote Joe? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Matthew 24, 21, and 24. Let's get this up up on it here. Yeah. Matthew chapter 20, verses, verses 21 through 24. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor even shall be. Verse 22. And except those uh, those days should be shortened there, should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Verse 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, Believe it not. Yeah. Verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, in so, in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. The last part of if it were possible, it's not possible to deceive us. Remember I spoke on deception. They'll deceive and be deceived. But we can't. it can't happen to us. It can't come down unto us. Psalm 91, a thousand have fallen at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it won't come down to us. It's time for me to speak that forth again. I left that out. I, I came in preaching that. Psalm 91, a thousand come at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it won't come down to us because we got a great big God. That is the king of kings and the lords of lords. And he just like a chick garden is eggs. It will not leave. It will protect to the death. It's, it's chicks. And the God is just like that with his, his, his people. Us, the believers. Those that have faith that God is who he said he was. And Paul said it like this. I rather leave and uh, be with the Lord, but for your sake, I am here because he got a work for you. He got, he has bought you. You've been blood bought and he's going to use you if nothing else to bring one person all this pre preaching that I do is for one soul it's just that I can be counted worthy when I meet my maker that I brought one soul, at least one soul to Christ that taught him and nourished him with the word of God that he can get it like I got it. That's what we all are forerunners, like John the Baptist to get somebody to this same point. We got to bear their infirmity. We have to long suffer. With the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. And you depressed people, seek your Lord and Savior. He will get you out of all of that. Praise God. I heard somebody put something on Facebook. A friend of mine, I met in Baltimore. That's where it is. And uh, he was talking about the drug addicts. So love the drug addicts and, 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 and have sympathy for these people 
because it's a struggle and it's hard to get off of that stuff and this and that. He went on and on. And I went on to, to, to tell him about my life. No, if you just reach out and make Jesus your Lord and Savior, he will deliver you from all of that. I am a witness. It's not that hard. All you have to do is give your life to Christ. And all that hard stuff, all you p people that have anxiety attacks and depression and goes through all of these, what they say, what they tell these kids that they got, A-A-D. A-D-A-D. A-D-H-T. A-D-H-T and stuff. Give, man, get them to know Jesus and the pardon of their sins. All of us dyslexic. We all probably got a little dyslexic in us. We all, I didn't know I had anxiety attack until they put me in the one of them MRIs. And man, you should see me coming up out of there like I was in the grave. They put me in the grave. And I sympathize with everybody that have them kind of attacks now. And I had to give it to God, please help me with this. I still struggle with it, though, but I still make it. The day, what's the other uh, scripture? Let's go. Psalms 27 and 1. Psalms 27 and 1. Not the one you want. That's the next one on the list, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. That's the last one, huh? No, you have one more. The Jeremiah. Okay, okay, uh, yeah. Okay. You yeah. want Psalms 127, verse 1. Except the Lord built the house... Thy labor in vain that built it, except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waketh, but in vain. One more time. Okay, you want to Jeremiah? No, uh-uh. Okay. Give me time. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 3658. Okay. So, except the Lord build the house. Remember, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are. God is building this temple. Why is he building this temple? He's building this temple by Sunday school, studying, by the preached word and the taught word, Sunday school, teaching, the Bible studies, prayer service. These are getting us, shaping us, and molding us to be conformed to the image of his dear son. He's trying to get us to look like his son, Jesus Christ. Remember, this is not a religion. This is a relationship, intimate relationship with God. We got to have that and we got to hold on to that because God is our maker. And once we made him our Lord and Savior, he, we, we are being owned by him. We are being used by him. Are you ready to be used by God to do the work that he called us to do to build this kingdom on this earth? And don't get away, get away from them people that think that we're going to overcome the world. The, the, the sinners are going to be here. Born in the sinful world, shaped in the sinful, this sinful world will be here to the rapture. Remember that. We are trying to get those out of that, compelling them into the kingdom of God to fight against that. And that's what it's going to be until the rapture comes. And we got to fight that within ourselves, that we got to build this temple those people that build in these big, high and mighty and these big, elaborate churches. If God is not building it, they're laboring in vain. They'll come up and he said, and they knock on the door and they said, we did we do great and mighty works and, and then we do prophesy. And then, and, and he said, get away from me, you workers of iniquity. It got these big mega church pastors and things. They're going to be shocked. Oh, will they? I don't know where their mind is. Do they know that they are funny with God? 
or not. I don't know. Somebody had to have been and told them, God always sent a messenger by to warn, to warn, to warn. That's what I'm doing, to warn. I'm a watchman on the wall. We got one more scripture. There it is. Come on with it. Jeremiah 3 and 31. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 31. 5. Uh -huh. Okay, well, I'm uh, Oh, yeah, okay, 5 31. <laughs> verse 31. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule of their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will ye do in the end thereof? Man, you hear some stuff out there on Facebook, Instagram. Oh, Jesus. And Twitter. It just blow your mind. But I heard some teenagers last night on Friday night on the 11th hour, and they talked so grown, so intelligent about what they're seeing. They done went through a pandemic. They done went through this war that's coming out and this gas to prices. And these people are understanding, like, wow, I was impressed. Man, they were better than the people that 30, 40 years old and older. They were seeing the world as it was. The woman kept telling her, how are y'all being able to quote? It wasn't that they weren't able to quote. They were just enamored with how all of this is unfolding and uh, people didn't know how to to quote with it or understand it. Huh? <laughs> they were teenagers. They was in 12th grade. And they talked so intelligent and she was impressed too. She said, I went into the interview and yeah, she kept to watch her move on my age. Ah, y'all able to quote. Why y'all ain't pulling y'all hair out? And they were just calmly explaining the situation there as they seen it. And they said, where you get your news? She said, a little bit here, a little bit there. But they could see through the, they could see through the, the falsehood. They could understand what was true and what was false. And I said, dog, oh, man. And this was, this was, this was 12 grades, 18 years old and nothing. But praise God. We ought to have a discernment to be able to understand the sign, the book, if you study it, if you go to Sunday school. Man, they had Croatia, I mean, uh, Crimea, Crimea. They had it back in uh, <laughs> the, the, the uh, biblical times when they had been overtaken back then. In the Sunday school lesson two weeks ago, I forgot to bring that out, but we, we over prepare and uh, we don't have time. But God is always there to give us what we need to give to you. And this is what he gave me to speak to you. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we'll reap if we faint not. The Bible says somewhere in there about the little children. Oh, yes. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes that there come perfected praise. She's my, my wife is right. And that's what they were speaking in my life. That's what I see. Man, they were, they, they were on it. <laughs> they were on it. I, I would have loved to turn the world over to them right about now. That's what I heard. Because you jokers up there, wishy-washy too. I mean, well, they, they, oh, they was against. Yeah, they were trying to hang that man. <laughs> and, 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 and Ukraine. Now they sympathize with it. Oh, man. There's nothing can come out of it. A wavering mind is unstable in all its affairs. Let us close. Jeremiah spoke truth to power, and he told the people to hold on. There's going to be a payday after a while. Mm. Everybody to put a pen in it. And let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word that went forth with power. 
the Jacob's ladder. We all go through a Jacob's ladder. We all be pulling on you for a blessing. And you said there will be a blessing if we just hold on. You will send your messengers to warn the people of destruction and that they prepare themselves for that destruction. And you will put your hands of protection around them as they go through. But as long as they hold on to you, everything will be all right. And they will come out as pre gold. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you bless these dying people that came to hear this word, that you protect their household. We plead the blood of the lamb on their doorposts and lentil. And COVID-19 and anything that is not like you cannot enter in, but will pass over. And as this word went forth, we pray that they have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. And Father God, give them this hunger and thirst after your righteousness, where they might be filled. And wisdom and revelation knowledge of your son Jesus. And that they will be sent forth as laborers in your vineyard, reaping the harvest. And these and all blessings we ask in your Son Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. And if anybody don't know, not know Jesus, if backsliders, he is in love with you. He will take you like the prodigal stone and throw the red carpet out. And he's been waiting for you ever since. And he will take you and he'll shape you and he'll mold you in what he needs you to be. Let him have his way. Give up the ghost. Make him your Lord and Savior. Say this prayer with me and you will be saved. Father God, I repent of my sins. I believe that you came to save me from my sins when you hung, bled, and died on the cross at Calvary. I believe that. And on the third day you arose. I believe that. That I might partake of the tree of life. And I want to make you my Lord and Savior. And Jesus' mighty name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. If you said that little prayer with me, go to Act 2 and 4 and 5 and 32, Acts 5 and 32, and see what it's all about. That's the day of Pentecost. That's the day 2 and 14. That's when uh, the church was formed. And 5 and 32 is you need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is going to bring everything to your remembrance, and he'll teach you all things that you need to be able to survive and get your Bible-believing church. And if you don't have a church home, this is the place to be loved, uplifted, and taught the Word of God, Temple of Faith of God. And if you need to give, you, you let me tell you, you do need to give somewhere. Tithes and offering is how your finances are going to be sustained. They believe in stock markets, and they believe in other things, gambling. But the best way to get your finances in order is right there at the tithes and office. Zale, this is a 501c3 ministry, and you can write it off on your taxes. And if all minds are clear, you got any other things to say this is the high. Well, we will we'll leave y'all with this, that Jesus is still on the throne. Let the sweet communion of your precious Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide until we return at the appointed time. We'll forever give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory that is so due you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and we thank you, Lord. And amen. Oh, wow. 
We'll see y'all at this time at 12 noon on next Sunday. If the Lord say the same, have a blessed day and have a blessed week. Bye-bye.